I've been wanting to try out some tungsten balanced motion picture film for a while now. Cinestill 800T would be the obvious choice, but I quite like the look of the standard Kodak Vision 3 500T film, and it worked out slightly cheaper, even with the more expensive processing. For anyone not familiar with these films, the Kodak Vision 3 films are produced for filming of motion pictures. They are only supplied in big roles and were never intended for shooting stills. But various companies and individuals buy up the big rolls of film and re-spool them into film canisters so you can use them in your 35mm camera. There are also 120 medium format versions, but we'll stick to the 35mm stuff for this video. There's only one issue. The Vision 3 film has a layer of something called Remjet, which has to be removed by a separate process before the film can be developed, making it unsuitable for the standard C41 processing that most labs use. The process for the Vision 3 film is called ECN2, which is used in the movie industry for these films. The Remjet layer is there partly to reduce scratches and static as the film whizzes through the movie camera, and also to reduce a glowing halo effect round the bright points of light. I'll resist the temptation of using the word that you'll usually find splattered all over any material that refers to these films, and just call it a glowing halo effect to keep things simple. As far as I'm aware, Cine still take rolls of the Kodak Vision 3 film, remove the Remjet layer, chop up the film and re-spool it into standard film canisters. My hunch is that they'll have developed a pretty good method for removing the Remjet effectively, leaving a film that can be processed in the standard C41 chemistry. The resulting film can be very prone to these glowing halo effects. Some people love it, but it doesn't suit everyone. Removing the Remjet layer also appears to leave the film more sensitive to light, hence the 500T ends up as an 800 ISO film. The other option is to spool the standard Vision 3 film straight into film canisters and then cobble together a sort of DIY ECN2 process, whereby you remove the Remjet first and then develop the film in a separate process. The problem with this system is that not many commercial labs offer the ECN2 process, and it's not always that easy to get all the Remjet off. If you take a look at this shot from my roll of film, there's some pretty big hoofing marks where some of the Remjet hasn't been removed fully. I knew this was likely to happen, but depending on what you're shooting your photos for, you might not want to take that risk. There are a few different versions of Vision 3 film, but 250D, which is a daylight balanced film, and 500T, which is tungsten balanced, are the ones that I was interested in using. If you look at the unexposed film, alongside a roll of old Kodakolor 2, they don't look all that different on the emulsion side, but flip them over and the back of the Vision 3 film is almost black. Another difference is the shape of the sprocket holes, which are more or less rectangular on the standard film, whereas the movie film is rounded on the short edge of the hole. Once processed, it doesn't look all that different to a standard Kodak film, apart from the shape of the sprocket holes, of course. But I was surprised about how lacking in density the highlights are, and that isn't my exposures because the edge markings are weak too. Anyway, that's enough waffle about the film. Once my Nikon F501 had decided that it was actually going to work, I popped a roll in it and headed out for some shots. I'll put a link in the description to the video talking about the F501. One of the main reasons I wanted a Nikon film body was to use some of my Nikon fit lenses, especially my lens baby Velvet 56, which is one of my favourite lenses, albeit only suitable for certain types of shots. The other lenses I used for this film were my Nikkor 50mm f2 and my Sigma 24mm f1.8. So now I think we can take a look at a few of the shots and I'll talk again in a bit.
I was expecting to have to colour correct the shots from this film, but I actually like them just as they are. Being a tungsten balanced film, you would expect everything to look a bit cooler than it should, and for daylight photography, an 85B warming filter is usually recommended. The slightly unnatural colour palette adds a sense of surrealism to some of the shots, and bearing in mind that they were shot in the UK, in winter, often on fairly overcast days, the whole role is surprisingly bright and punchy. As I mentioned earlier, remnants of the remjet removal process are ever present, as you can see here, and here, and here, and here. I wanted something with a different look, so I'm quite happy to trade a bit of work cloning out speckles for the look that I was seeking. Another downside of this film, assuming you're not doing the processing yourself, is that the few labs that will process it for you tend to be quite busy, and as this is a longer two-stage process, it might be a while before you get your scans back. I think it was just under six weeks before these scans arrived in my inbox, so it probably isn't the film for you if you're a bit impatient. Ok, time for a few more shots before a quick summary. So, have I enjoyed using this film? The answer is a resounding yes. I didn't do anything fancy, I just shot at the box speed of 500 ISO and the results are exactly what I was looking for. I did have to tweak the levels of the scans to get them just how I like them, but that's always the case and I usually opt for a flatter scan so I have a little more control over the final look. I wouldn't necessarily use this film all the time, purely because it's not that convenient, but I already have a roll of 250D in my Nikon, and a roll of 500T in my Yashica FR1, so I'm definitely happy to use it again. I think that probably covers most of what I want to say. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.